Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to service. After a dampish week, it's been a farmer. We scored a bit of rain, so I'm pretty happy about it all. So, so the rain's a bit slow coming, but very thankful. Um, unfortunately, COVID's come back again. So we're back on restrictions. Unfortunately, there's no singing. If you was here last Sunday fortnight ago, we had the same rules apply. It's all on the overhead. We still have songs, but we're just speaking them. There's some for the men, some for the ladies, and some for all of us. So just follow the overheads, so that'll be good. And also, there was a baptism planned for today, for Baptism Sunday, but that's been postponed. But we're still celebrating the baptismal birthday. So if you celebrate your birthday in July, I think that's pretty early in the service, so you just follow past the while. But before we start our worship, I'll just ask you to join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the name above every other name, we praise you. We pray that your name is blessed now and forever, in good times and in bad times, from east to west, north to south. You are worthy of, it, of, of praise. Your name is powerful and you rule over all the nations. Lead <coughs> Pastor Wally as he leads us in worship, guiding, giving wisdom, and as he proclaims your message today. We have all those who celebrate their baptism birthday for July and remind us all the wonderful the wonders of baptism and the renewal new and eternal life you have promised us through your holy baptism. So let's come and praise you now through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Father. So let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for making us yours in baptism. Day after day, you put to death everything selfish and sinful in us and bring to life the new self. Help us to continue to live as new people who do what is right and good. Send your holy angel to be with us so that the devil will have no power over us. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us always. Amen.
and forever. And his children as long as the heavens endure. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances. If they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments. Then I will punish their transgression with the rod and, with, and their iniquity with scourges.
strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as a cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is written in the 6th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning of the 30th verse. Jesus has compassion on the crowd. This is also the text for the address. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognised them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and, and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When he had crossed over, they came to land. They came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for having mercy and feeding and healing us. Help us to trust in you and make us well. Amen. Before we move to the next hymn, I'm going to talk to the children. Jesus was a bit like that. Jesus wanted to go away and have a rest. So he got into a boat and went further away, thinking that there would be no people there when he got there. But by the time he'd rowed his boat with his disciples and got to the place where they wanted to go, have you? Right. And there were people there already. So the people had already got there before him and they were ready to see Jesus again. That's right. <laughs> so, 
So what does Jesus do? Does he say, no, I'm going to have a rest? No, he says, I'm going to talk to the people because they wanted to hear some things from him. So that's pretty wonderful about Jesus' love, isn't it? Even though he wanted to go off and have a rest, he decides, I need to talk to the people now. And so he still went to talk to the people. Even when he got the boat and went on further, there were still more people and he still talked to them. So I think that shows us how much Jesus loves us. And that's pretty important. Yes, Jesus was a human being and he wanted to have a rest too. Dear Jesus, we thank you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats and uh, we'll move on to the next hymn, hand in hand. from God our Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. From the Gospel for today I'll read some of the verses in the middle from verse 32. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognised them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like, a sh like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Heavenly Father, as we meditate on your word, bless us and strengthen us and teach us many things. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> My dear Christian friends, the world that we live in runs at a pretty hectic pace. There was a time that many of us can remember when the shops were open from nine until five. That's it. Uh, people went to work in the morning, came home in the evening, that was the end of the day. Work was from Monday to Friday, maybe Saturday morning at times, and no more. And if there were people who had to work on the weekend, uh, well, they were paid extra. I think that's still the case, although I think that there was some move to change some of that as well. But anyway, by the way, but life was pretty much a routine, and you knew what to expect. Not today, it seems. No longer are there the regular hours in many places. Work just seems to go on and on endlessly. Facilities are open all hours. Uh, entertainment runs almost non-stop. And we seem to have little time to do some of the simple things of life, let alone have a time of rest. At the same time, we all know to all that rest is a pretty important factor for us. We need to take our time of rest. No one doubts that uh, as much as we uh, uh, don't do it as well as we should at times. We're reminded about it. Drive down the highway and you see the sign that says drowsy dri drivers die or other such expressions which I forgot about for a moment. Uh, not that I was asleep when I saw them. Uh, but it all too easily happens, let me tell you. I never cease to marvel at the way the human body has been created. How it continues to function 
how it has been built in with certain features and certain requirements. And we ought to pause and stop and think about those for a while. We are, after all, responsible for the bodies that God has given us. We're duty bound to take care of them. One of the clear teachings is that Jesus was also a human being as he lived here on this earth. So that means he was bound by the normal human uh, requirements. Uh, he had to eat, he had to sleep, he had to take his time of rest. And as we see from this account, uh, he suggested it was time to take some rest. And so he sets off sail in the boat to go and do that. But as we know, it didn't happen because the crowd followed them. Uh, in fact, they got there before them. Uh, and uh, what did Jesus do? As I said to the children a moment ago, uh, he sees the crowd and continues to teach. I suppose that leaves me a little bit of a dilemma because that flies exactly in the face of what I've just said a moment ago. Uh, because Jesus appears to do a backflip. Um, when he goes off to go and get some rest, he then ends up carrying on working. But my interest in these verses is rather much more in the fact of uh, the attitude that Jesus here demonstrated towards the people. While his intent was to go and take that time of rest, uh, duty called, and he answered, and he responded. And besides, I guess you could say that that ride across the, uh, the waters uh, would have had a reasonable calming effect, uh, and he might have even had a snooze in the stern of the boat, as he did on one other occasion. Um, the description of Jesus here in relation to the crowd, I think, is very telling. He looked at the crowd, and he had compassion on them. And we ought to think about what that means. He had compassion on them. I think there is the heart of the Saviour. There is the evidence of the one whose calling it was to have compassion on sinners. And while this uh, account here is specific in that there was a great crowd who'd simply uh, uh, gathered spontaneously, uh, it is in effect a depiction of the whole of the human race, the human condition, the sinful human condition. Jesus had compassion on them. The gospel is very simple, but it's a very heart-wrenching form. So what is compassion? Let's have a look at the definition of it. You go to the dictionary and you have a look. And it says, a deep awareness of the suffering of another accompanied by the wish to relieve it. Okay, that includes the word wish, which is probably not one I'd particularly use when I'm talking about spiritual matters, but that's okay. It's a good starting point. Or well, there's another definition I've read that says, a feeling of distress and pity for the suffering or misfortune of another, often including the desire to alleviate it. And then I saw a list of synonyms. Synonym being a word that has a similar meaning. And it's quite a list. Sympathy. Understanding, charity, pity, humanity, mercy, heart, sorrow, kindness, tenderness, condolence, clemency, commiseration, soft-heartedness, tender-heartedness. Okay, so now you can recite them all back to me, can you? Uh, no, that's not the intent. What I'm really trying to say and to give a picture of is that you see the extensiveness of what this word compassion is all about and particularly what Jesus is on about. The trait of the Saviour is as broad as you can make it. And that, after all, is the only way that we have an appreciation of what God has done for us through his Son, Jesus Christ, by allowing him to take on this human form and demonstrate all of this to us as he lived among us. As Paul also acknowledges in the letter to the Philippians, where he talks about the fact that he humbled himself, uh, that he took on the human form, that he did not count equality with God something to be grasped, that he emptied himself, that he took on the form of a servant, that he was obedient unto death. These are the features of our Lord. Deep awareness, 
no question about it whatsoever when it comes to God and his consideration of us. So when Jesus took on this, uh, this task of becoming a human, there was no question that he didn't know what it was in for. It wasn't some kind of a blind excursion that, that in which he suddenly said, oh my goodness, is it really this bad? He knew. The situation was clear. Human beings destined to death because of sin. Nothing less. So when Jesus faced this crowd as he came into shore on the boat, he knew their plight. Even their actual physical situation was a depiction of their spiritual state because their existence in life was without any real leadership or rulership. They were hungry. And in fact, next week we have the story of the feeding of the 5,000, talking about that hunger. So the description here is pretty apt, both from a physical state point of view and from a spiritual state. Sheep without a shepherd, wandering aimlessly, saddled by the terrible state of the world around them and beset by the ravages of the sinful condition with no clear outlook where they were going, no clear outlook as to where the future was, even despite the promises of God that they knew. So he began to teach them many things, says verse 34. Many things. They needed it. We need it. Yes, we've learnt it all many times, many years, for a long, long time, no doubt. But yet, when we see how people live in this life, one has to wonder, have we learnt it as well as we should? Have we really understood the compassion of Jesus? How he feels for us? How he has this deep awareness of our sinful state uh, and its ultimate effect upon us? Do we sincerely believe that he has a deep desire to alleviate that situation for us and to bring us into relationship with him and to assure us of that eternal life. Too often, our lives are busied with many things. We have so much. We are weighed down with so much. And it seems the more we have, the more we have to do. The day of worship for Christians has become a struggle for many people. Time begs their commitment in many things and ultimately some things miss out. Too often it is time with God, listening to his word, worshipping him, spending time with fellow Christians. Yep, we come together in God's house but we're so busy we need to rush off to the next thing waiting for our attention. The story of creation has been subject to all kinds of assumption over the years. How long were the days, etc., etc.? Was it actually an account or did it even really occur? And we begin to muse about all of those possibilities. But most of all, the simplest understanding is still the best. In six days God created the world seventh day he rested. There it is. So even from the very beginning, God begins to teach. Teaching in this act of creation. He taught his overarching creativeness. He taught his ongoing provision. And he taught, he taught the place of humans in that creation. Humans as the crowning glory to his creation. But yet also still under his provision, his providing hand. Yes, the human body is marvellous, but it is not the be-all and end-all. It's not the be-all and end-all to the point where its uh, care can be ignored. Our world is such that we cannot assume that we know how to cope just because we have learnt so many things over time. What faces us in this pandemic is one thing that should remind us of that. We're not able to cope so easily with all of these things. Even all the natural events that occur, the floods, the fires, uh, constantly uh, remind us 
of how fickle our situation <coughs> is. We have again this past week uh, huge floods in Europe, Germany in particular, uh, with a lot of damage, a lot of lives lost. All of us are well familiar with the fast-moving changes that face us daily and the older you get, the harder it is to cope with those changes. It's no less important then, and perhaps even more important, that in the face of all things, in the face of that daily challenge, we look to a compassionate Saviour to continue to teach us many things. He teaches us daily that we are forgiven that we are loved by him and that we are then called to live for him in the things that we do and the life that we lead. A life now ruled not by sin but by him. Let's not get carried away too much with the multitude of things in life that we can and might like to do. We may need to say no from time to time, recognizing that we can easily be tempted to think that this or that is going to be so wonderful and provide us with the best outcome. Well, it may well not. Maybe it merely entices us away from the only source of our future. Human nature, by natural instinct, will naturally turn to itself and to its own means, uh, even ready to dismiss God, and in its place to trust the things of this world. May God give each of us the open hearts to hear from him, to learn the many things he wants to teach us, still teach us, so that we might continue to live for him in whatever time he continues to give us here in this life, here on this earth. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we will stand and confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Song, Saviour of the World. Jesus, Saviour of the World, come in mercy to set us free. We look to you to help and save us. By your cross and precious blood, you redeem your people, Lord. We look to you to help and save us. Your disciples <coughs> Right.
Thank you, Lord God, that you have called us into the flock of Jesus. Make us like our good shepherd, so that we have compassion on people, helping them in their needs and leading them to Jesus. Use us and our possessions for your service. Amen. Our God cares for his people and sends shepherds to feed, protect, guide and nurture them. Our good shepherd Jesus Christ knows each one of us by name. Let us pray to our shepherd who is always with us. Thank you Lord Jesus our good shepherd for calling us into your flock. Have compassion on your people and purify the teaching of your church. Remove the poison of accommodating the cultural outlook that so easily turns us away from you. Expose our error, forgive us, and bring us to repentance and renewal. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Have compassion on all the leaders of our church, its pastors, lay assistants, and all who preach your word and teach your word. Enable pastors to shepherd your flock in this church by leading them to the green pastures of your word. Lead them to drink deeply of your water of life each day and give them the courage to speak your word truly. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Have compassion on our brothers and sisters in other Christian churches at this time. Remove the error that divides us. Direct our discussions and decisions about cooperation and strengthen our love for one another. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for all who rule and govern, that they may be fair and compassionate shepherds of their people. Have compassion on this land, and today we thank you for the blessing of much needed rain during this past week. Continue to send rain where it is needed and where it has not been received at this time. Prosper all proper work and learning and bless the teachers and children in our schools. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Have mercy on all who are in need, dear Lord, and shepherd them. Bring peace where there is trouble, food where there is hunger, hope where there is despair. Soften our hearts to have compassion and help where we can. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Good Shepherd, support each of us here in our daily lives. Give us strength and skill for our work, love for our families, righteousness in our thinking and doing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Have compassion on all who are sick or stressed. Heal and restore them and give them confidence in you. We thank you especially for, the, uh, for Terry Schutz and the uh, surgery he has undergone. Uh, for Peter Fran and who will have surgery this week. Meet the needs of those whom we know personally and any others in need and whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Merciful God, as your son heard the cries of the people for him to heal them, hear our prayers according to your grace so that your glory may be known throughout the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is indeed right and good, Lord God, Holy Father, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he overcame death by his resurrection and opened up for us the way to eternal life with you. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and praise your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after the supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Gracious Father, we therefore remember the sacrifice of our Lord in celebration, as we receive his body and blood with this bread and wine. We rejoice to receive all that he has done for us in his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, and we wait for his coming again to share with us the heavenly feast. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we who receive the body and blood of Christ may live as true members of the body of your Son. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God. Come, everything is ready. Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you in body and in soul unto life eternal. Go in peace. Almighty and merciful God, you have made your loving presence known to us in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Make us faithful witnesses to the truth, so that those who hear may believe and be united with all the saints in glory. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace as fellow members of God's family. Amen. Amen. So our closing hymn, the servant song.